grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to reread verses 1 and 2 of the Old Testament lesson recorded for us in Isaiah chapter 65. I was sought by those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that was not called by my name. I have stretched out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, according to their own thoughts. Here ends our text. Dear friends in Christ, on January 12, 2007, a young man walked into a Washington, D.C. subway and stopped and stood against the wall. Opening the case at his feet to encourage contributions, he placed his violin to his shoulder. During the next 43 minutes, six beautiful pieces filled the way, walkway. More than 1,000 commuters passed by. Only seven slowed to listen just a little. Of these, one recognized the young musician. She tossed in $20. His total take that hour was $32.17. Joshua Bell is esteemed as among the finest violinists of our age. Already that same year, Bell was selling out symphony halls with tickets running from $100 and up. In that subway, he had passionately played the same marvelous music on the splendid Stradivarius he had purchased for $3.5 million. Sometimes people miss the beauty of what they are hearing. Today, God is singing his song to us. Are we listening to his beauty? We know that God began this song soon after Adam and Eve fell into sin. He begins with these words, I will put enmity between you, namely Satan, and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He will bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. From that point on, God continued to sing his song of love for us. And he continued to add verses about who this seed was and who he would be. In the song, the seed would be like Moses, the prophet. He will be a priest after the order of Melchizedek and would reign on the throne of David forever. And he would be born into the flesh. This seed of God's song, as we saw in our epistle lesson this morning, was born just as his song had said. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. The seed was born under God's law, which you and I, from the time of Adam and Eve's fall into sin, could not keep. The seed was born to keep that law. Therefore, born of a woman, flesh and blood like you and me, so that he might have to be under the same rules and oracles that you and I are under when it comes to God. And not only keep the law perfectly, but he also was to redeem us from the curse of the law. The soul that sinneth, it shall die, God says. Therefore, by our sins, we were under that curse. But we are, we see that we were born under the law. 
and that we will redeem those who are under the law, that's us, that we might receive the adoption as son. So the seed that was promised in the first verse of God's song is on none only than Jesus Christ. He kept the law perfectly for you and died in the place of us as sinners so that they, we, would not die eternally. This is God's song, which he has sung since almost the beginning of time. This is God's song, which you and I have heard. And the blessings of this song is and was and are for the Israelites and us. The Israelites knew the blessings, and so do we. As St. Paul says this morning in the epistle, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. You are Christ's possession and heirs according to the promise. The song of God has gone out, and you have heard it, and by His grace you have believed in Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world through faith, and you have received in your baptism all that God had won through Jesus Christ on the cross. And the song of God continues. But do you still hear the beauty of that song? Do you still have the same feelings, and I'm going to use a bad word here, enthusiasm for that song? We see in our text that the Israelites forgot that beauty of God's song. Verses 3 to 5 say, says this, And people who provoked me to anger continually to my face, who sacrificed in gardens and burnt incense on altars of brick, who sat, sit among the graves and spend their night in the tombs, who ate swine's flesh and the broth of abominable things in their vessels, who say... Keep to yourself, God, do not come near me, for I am holier than you. These are smoke in my nostrils and fire that burns all the day. They worshipped other gods. They ate forbidden food. They told God to take a hike, get lost, get away from us as far as you. The Israelites who were God's chosen people, forgot the song and wandered away from God. Do you still hear the beauty of God's song? Or has it lost its beauty for you also? What is your favorite song? Is it a favorite song that's lasted more than a week? More than a month? or more than a year. Favorite songs come and go. Most of us, if we're younger or even older, hear a song that we like and we'll play it over and over and over and over. Some of you older or more mature adults remember the 45s. And you probably wore out a couple of them because they were your favorite song. But in this day and age, with the popularity of music coming out as fast as you can write it, favorite songs are favorite today, but maybe not tomorrow or even a year from now. Can you tell me for a fact that the favorite song that you had a year ago is still your favorite song? And you listen to it more than any other song? I'm not sure that too many of us can do that. 
Are we like the Israelites when it comes to God's song? We have heard it over and over and over and over again. It's familiar to us. We could recite God's song in our sleep. But even though we know it by heart, do we really remember and see the beauty of it each and, time, each and every time God sings it to us? Or is it a song that we have come so familiar with us that we have forgotten its beauty? And maybe not even listen to the words anymore because we know what's coming. We know what's next. We know how the story turns out. We know how the song ends with Christ dying on the cross and rising again and ascending into heaven and promising you and I who believe in him eternal life forever. That end hasn't come yet. But that's part of the song. Do we hear and listen as we once did when the song first touched our heart and we came to faith through baptism? Or are we like the Israelites or the people of the subway who hear the music but pay very little attention to it anymore because it is so familiar? Or we are about our daily business and activities and we have not got time to stop and listen to God's song of love or what it has to say to us. Today, God sings his love song to us through ordinary words. His spirit opens our hearts to hear him. Today, God feeds us common wafer and wine his Son here gives to us His resurrected self, His body, His blood. As we quickly go on our way, will we recognize His beauty and the sweetness of His song? Today, God sings to, the, to our world his extraordinary mercy. He speaks to your family and friends through the precious instrument he has painstakingly crafted for this purpose. With the priceless wood of his cross, he has fashioned you as his Stradivarius. Should we then be surprised if people don't hear him right away? Because maybe his Stradivariuses are not playing the right tune, are not showing the true mercy, are not sounding beautiful in the ears that hear them. But God's song goes on and on. Whether you and I want to move it on or not, God sings and continues to sing as he did in the, that I stretch out my hands all day long to rebellious people. I stretch out my hands of love so that they might understand the song of mercy that I have proclaimed through my son Jesus Christ on the cross. All day long he reaches out so that we and others in our community and in our world today might hear the beauty of the salvation of one's soul. God's Spirit has not yet finished singing Christ's splendid song in us and through us. Come, dear friends in Christ, not only hear God's splendid song, 
God's song which he sings to us. But come this morning and taste and smell and touch that song as you receive Christ's body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine. Hear him singing those beautiful words to you once more. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.